Hi, I'm Veronica Statch. Welcome to Shalom World's original program, Jesus My Savior, where we give you moving conversion journeys from all over the world. For 18 years, our guest struggled with a heavy drinking addiction. Being found and presumed dead multiple times, it was through the hands of a priest that Jesus was able to set him free. From Kenya, let us welcome Henry Onyango. My name is Henry Onyango, born in a family of eight. My father passed on, my mother is still alive. Um, I've been struggling with alcohol in my life. This uh, problem began when I was in high, when I was in college. I was introduced to it by my friend during a birthday party of one of us. And after this, I started taking alcohol. And alcohol became part of me. I could go out during the weekend and take alcohol. And then it later, the situation later came to be worse. And I could not do without alcohol. I was always drunk from morning to evening. And the situation even became worse when I came out of college. For the next 18 years, I was a serious addict. I lost many of my friends due to alcohol complication. And this is because of the situation, my family rejected me. My family members could not cope with it. My mom, my brothers, my sisters could not cope with it. They threw me out of their home. And the position, the, the situation worsened. My life drained, everything changed. I was completely rejected by everybody. And when I saw the I was getting I was getting to the worst part of it. I contacted my aunt when a uh, connection with the Vincentian prayer house in Kisumu. My aunt came for me and took me to the Vincentian prayer house in Kisumu, where I was introduced to Father Joseph, the director of the center. Father, Rode, Father Joseph came to me, and Father Joseph asked me whether I truly wanted to be healed. I told Father I wanted to be healed from this condition, from this situation. And Father prayed for me. He took the cross, laid on my forehead, and prayed for me a very brief prayer. And this brief prayer turned my life around. I felt warm, completely the power of God when he was praying for me. And after that, I never took alcohol again. I attended the, the retreat, the Bible Convention retreat. Up to now, up to date, as I'm talking to you, I've never taken alcohol. I thank God that I'm myself back, regained my, my health. My family members have accepted me back. I'm back in the sacrament, I'm working for the Lord, I'm happy, and I thank God for the mercy that the Lord has showed me. Hi, Henry. Welcome to Shalom World's Jesus, my Savior, today. Thank you very much. So, Henry, can you share with us a little bit about your background and your family growing up? I am the Tanbon in a family of eight, uh, one sister and seven brothers. My dad worked with a research uh, institution known as Kenya Medical Research Institute. And um, we were brought up actually in a jovial family, um, in a middle class family. Uh, we, we, we were raised up in a, in a way that we, we actually enjoyed our lives until our father passed on. My dad passed on when I was only 14 years old. And uh, I was doing my third, third grade uh, in high school. And so uh, we were, my mother was left a widow, of course, with eight. Children, most of us were still very young, apart from the first two. And so things became quite tough, became quite difficult, especially when it's concerning the school fees. No, she was just a housewife, and she had uh, no any other um, way of getting income. And so that is how uh, difficulties began in our family. And so to ease this pressure from my mother, I had to shift from uh, a boarding school uh, to a day school, uh, so that my mom could afford um, um, my education and also for my siblings. Um, after sort of these difficulties in your youth, um, for 18 years, uh, you had said you struggled with a severe drinking addiction. Uh, and I just wanted to dive into that and ask, you know, how did that start? What pushed you to begin and sort of enter into uh, your fight with alcoholism? Uh, in the year 2000, when I was in college, uh, there was a, one of us was uh, celebrating her birthday party, and so we went for the party. So when we went for the party, I had not tested alcohol since I was born, 
and uh, there was some wine that was being, uh, you know, there was wine and there was soda. So my colleagues uh, advised me. They actually, I said no, but they insisted that I have just have a taste of uh, wine. And so I took wine, and afterwards I felt it was good. And so I started checking it, and and then I just became, I started now, it became part of me in a way that I could now not do much without taking alcohol. So I started taking alcohol when I was still in college. Yeah, it really took charge of your life, right? Um, now, what are some of maybe the darkest moments that you experienced during this time, you know, when you realized that you were hopeless? I was like living for alcohol away from my family because none wanted to see me, including my own mother. I was still alive from there up to now. Because of the situation I was in, I was not myself. I'm somebody who could, no, I could walk with one set of clothes for, for the whole weeks or for weeks without changing them, go take shower, don't change. No, I could not talk to people. I could not sit with them. I could not discuss anything with anybody. I was just on my own. Yeah. And I know you had mentioned that a few times uh, you were found, people thought you were dead. Um, how did that, how did that sort of pan out? On one occasion, uh, we went uh, to take alcohol. I, together with my colleagues, and when we went there, I personally took a lot of alcohol. And, of course, I blacked out by the roadside. And when the policemen were on patrol, they came upon me, and to them, they knew I was dead. And um, they called uh, for their vehicle to come and pick me, take me to the mortuary. So uh, when the vehicle came, the policeman realized upon inquiry that I was coming from a nearby, from the nearby village. So they talked to the assistant chief of the area. They called for the assistant chief of the area. He came. Uh, he was able to identify me as uh, one of the people who come from his uh, sub-location. Of course, he knew me because on several locations, uh, he had ruffled, ruffled feathers because of alcohol, taking illicit alcohol. And so the assistant chief called my mother. My mother was called. She came. She also identified me and said I was her son. Now the policeman decided now to take me to the mortuary. But then when they decided to put on gloves, right? they were putting on gloves, ready to put me inside the line cruiser. Then I coughed. So when I coughed, it's when they realized, oh, he's still, I'm still alive. That was the first occasion. Another experience happened. And this was the worst, because it happened at night. We went to take alcohol with my colleagues. And we took it until late in the night. I was very drunk, very, very drunk. And I was trying to walk, find my way home. It was also raining. I fell down. Uh, I was there. I was rained down. I was in a pool of water. From, mid, from that time, midnight until morning, the children who go to school in the morning, very early in the morning, are the ones who came and found me lying there. And they were, some of, one of them knew me, they rushed home and uh, reported the matter to my mother, that they found me lying in a pool of water and it rained on, I'm dead. So when they came, they concluded that actually I was dead. My uncle, who is actually my friend now, Suggested. They also wanted to take me back to, 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 to take me to the mortuary. But my uncle suggested that there was no reason to take me to the mortuary because it was going to cost them a lot. The only thing was me to be taken home. They make a quick preparation for my burial and bury me. You know, all this happened because they were already tired of me. They wanted to do away with me. And so they took me home. After taking me home, I was left there. They actually put me uh, in the sitting room. When I came to my senses, I found myself in the sitting room and they were going on with their preparation. And then I understand in that process, while still lying there, is when they realized that, one of them realized that I was still breathing. You know, everybody told me, please stop. Stop now, you're going to die. But it never stopped. It went on like that. 
and only fat. Yes. What was that first step? Where did you find help? Where was that first step you took um, that essentially brought you where you are now? What was that first direction that you went in? You know, my mother tried. I was taken to various churches to be prayed for. I was taken to the African Inland Church. I was prayed for. I'm not going to, uh, to stop alcohol. The pastor says everything was going to be okay. That same night, that same day, I drank too much until I spent the night out. I was taken to other churches to relate to the Lady Maria faith, to be prayed for. Nothing happened. Now, I was even taken to an, a camp where we were told to remove our clothes and then we were put in a smoke. That, you know, that sweat will remove alcoholism from us. It never happened. So I was taken through many, many places uh, to receive to get help, but it could not work. Then I have an aunt who had close relationship with the Vincentian uh, ministry, the priest. She came home and she told me, please, have you, she asked me whether I had heard about the Vincentian ministry, a Catholic congregation. I told her, no, I never heard about the Vincentian ministry. But I had already given up hope. So I did not even respond to her. I, I didn't talk to her. I, she, she left me her number. She told me to call her when uh, I really need uh, to come. And she left. My life continued to be so hard. I could not sleep at night without taking alcohol. I would see like ghosts on the morning, whatever ghost thing. I would see, you know, very bad and very, I, I, could have, I could have very bad visions. Then I, I, I realized now it was too much. So I said, let me try for the last time because I'd given up hope from the church, from getting help from the church. So I called her. It was on a Sunday, the 9th of December, 2018. And I told her, aunt, please come and take me to the Vincentian prayer house where you saint. She was going for mass. After mass, she came. She asked me, when I was ready to go, I told her yes. I was so dirty when she came. I did not have even the shoes, I had no shoes on. My shirts, my clothes were so dirty. I was actually drunk. The, from the previous night, I would smell, my, my clothes were smelling of alcohol. But when she came, she took me the way I was. She brought me to the Vincentian prayer house, Kisumu. She suggested that I had to see the, the priest ahead of the the, retreat, the Bible Convention retreat, which was beginning the next day. So we came with her. When we came to the Vincentian prayer house, I can remember so well, we came just near the, the, the priest's door. My, my aunt called for Father Joseph, the director of the Vincentian prayer house, Kisumu. And Father Joseph came, not after a long while. And when he came, you know, I was so completely, I was completely, I had lost hope for me. So when he came, he came to me, he was smiling. I could not look, I could not even look at his eyes. He asked me, and do you want to be healed? I said, yes, Father, I want to be healed. But I was not looking, I was not looking at him, I was looking down. When we were driving back to my aunt's house, I told her, Aunt, you know what? I have been delivered. And she asked me how. I said, I felt it when the Father prayed for me. Since that day of the 9th, December 2018, to this particular time that I'm talking to you, I have never tasted alcohol. I have never felt any urge of having alcohol in my life. I also don't know what even my own mother does not believe. For the first two, three months, it was like, is it really my son? Up to now, this is almost three years now. God has saved me. Henry, that was, that was so powerful um, for me to hear. And that moment when you said the priest asked you, you know, do you want to be healed? It was exactly like when Jesus asked that man by the pool, 
do you want to be healed? And it was just so powerful. And um, I want to ask, how did your life then start to change? I know you said that you hadn't touched alcohol since that day in December. How did your life start looking after that experience? Now, uh, the change that came in my life, no, I find it difficult to talk about the change in my life without mentioning the Vincentian ministry. The change that has come in my life, first and very, very importantly, that I, I have a new name. I've got respect from the people. I've been accepted in the society. As I'm talking to you now, I'm working in the church, something I never knew would happen to me in my life. I, I, I am back to my family completely. You know, as I'm telling you, it's like I'm living a new life. I can now, I now know what is wrong and what is what is right. The little money I have, I can use it to buy my own thing to do to do it to use it well. Something that I'm never, I never used for the did for the last 18 years. It's a complete change, but only attributed to the living God, to Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen to that. And Henry, what are some of those opportunities that God has given you to serve, um, whether it's at the Vincentian Ministries or what does uh, your life look like right now? Especially I'm talking to the people who think there's no way out. People who are desperate. People who have completely given up hope. I'm telling them that there is hope in Jesus. I'm telling them that God can, God will do what man cannot do. What people told me will never happen to me, God did it. People will reject you the way they rejected me. God will never reject you. The only thing you need to do is to make a step and go to him. Go back to him and cry to him. Tell him the way I went to him. Open up yourself to God. The way I opened myself to Father Joseph, he asked me, do you really want to be healed? Do you want to be healed? I told him, Father, yes, I want to be healed. Those who are desperate, to come back, a mind to tell them to come back to God. Tell God to help you, to, to save you, to heal you, and God will never fail you. He never failed me. He is God. God Almighty. Henry, I feel like the, the words that keep coming to my mind are the come as you are. Right. And I um, feel like that's what Jesus was calling you to, to just come as you were with no shoes, you know, dirty and drunk. And those are the words sort of that I can just feel him saying to everybody, come as you are. You are enough, you know, with his open arms. Um, so thank you so much for your story. You and everything you shared are such a gift. You know, um, the transformation that God was able to achieve um, even though you're encountering so much hopelessness, it gives us so much hope. Those people listening, you know, no doubt. And it just shows your story how, you know, God can overcome the greatest addictions. Um, and just by his grace, we are so healed. Thank you very much. And thank you everyone for watching Jesus, my savior here on Shalom World. Join us next week. I'm Veronica Statch, your host and God bless. searching for answers? Discover your true identity. Stay tuned to Shalom World.